Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the uh, the, the, the first, the inaugural um, presentation uh, webinar for Leaker UK. Um, effectively, this is a, a quick introduction to uh, what is uh, Leaker Lightweight Aggregate and a little bit of history on our business too. So hopefully at the end of it, um, it will give you an insight into our business. Uh, more importantly, when we're going through this presentation, uh, what I would ask is, is that you consider some of the problems, some of the problems you're facing and may have faced in the past, um, and in particular, just how well this material may have possibly solved those problems for you or may going forward solve those problems for you. So I would ask you to keep a, a, an open mind through the presentation. And obviously, if you have any questions at the end, please post those questions in type um, and then I'll, I'll respond to them through the, uh, through, through the webinar function. So, okay, uh, hopefully you're all getting good reception and you can see the slide that's on the screen there. Uh, so to, to, to jump into things, just a quick summary of what we're going to present today. Uh, we're just going to cover what is Leaker, uh, where is Leaker specified, an overview of the solutions of Leaker, um, how we store Leaker, how we prepare the uh, construction site before Leaker, uh, how we compact Leaker, the installation of Leaker, and the delivery and some case studies, and then obviously at the end, some questions and feedback. Uh, we also ask at the end, um, there's a poll, if you would uh, take part in that poll to give us a bit of feedback. So obviously this is our very first time of doing this uh, kind of presenting. So it would be interesting to, to get your honest and candid feedback. Please be as brutal as you need to be, uh, but not too brutal about me, please, because I appreciate that. Right, okay, to start with, so what is Leaker LWA? Uh, effectively, Leaker LWA, Leaker itself is uh, the, the registered brand of uh, a material which is a lightweight expanded clay. Uh, we're part of the Saint Gaban group, so if you know Saint Gaban and uh, understand how many brands they have under their umbrella, we're one of their many quality brands. Uh, the material first at its inception in the 1930s. Um, and pretty much since then, uh, in the 1950s, it was starting to be used in civil engineering applications. It was first used um, and purposefully used in uh, the manufacture of uh, lightweight blocks. Obviously, it's lightweight nature, it's insulation elements, and it's sound absorbing elements as well uh, go to add a, a great quality to a medium and lightweight block. Um, but it was discovered that the insulating elements of, of Leaker offer a fundamental advantage in locations where frost susceptibility is an issue. Uh, by using Leaker in the core of an embankment in these locations, uh, what it did was in some cases took away or reduced uh, the level of frost heave within the embankment, be it a road or a rail embankment. Um, and in those countries where they suffered that, they, they discovered very quickly that leak was a great solution. Um, from there onwards, it was tested um, and proven to be a, a quality uh, solution uh, within geotechnical engineering and civil engineering and has grown strength in strength since then. Leaker as, as, as an organization, uh, very much based across Europe. Uh, we have manufacturing plants in various locations, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Poland, uh, Portugal, to name a few. Uh, we are the, uh, the largest manufacturer of lightweight expanded clay in Europe. Um, and we, uh, we have been for quite a long time. So what, what, I, what I'm going to do now is introduce to you how we manufacture the material. Um, so I'm going to quickly show you a, a video of our Hing plant in Denmark. Now, that this, this is our, our clay pit. Um, what you'll recognize straight away is this is where we take all our clay from to manufacture Leica. And from an environmental point of view, um, that's a very old clay pit and very little damage has been done to the environment. Actually, when we take a cube of clay off that clay pit, we actually make five cube of leaker. So from an environmental point of view, we have uh, some fairly good credentials there. So we bulldoze the material off, so there's very little damage to the land mass. Uh, we push it on the conveyor, which you can see to uh, what is the right-hand side of my screen, into our manufacturing plant. Now, heat is the primary method of, of uh, you know, producing an expanded clay. So you can see the leak, uh, the, the clay, sorry, they're going into the manufacturing process, uh, various organic and clay mixes coming together there. Uh, so we process it. We take out the impurities, which you can see there. That's the stone being crushed out of the leaker and any impurities that we don't want going into the product. And then we reprocess it back into a pulverized state. That clay is then fed up into the rotary kiln. The rotary kiln operates at 1,000 to 1,400 degrees centigrade, depending on what kiln it is. You can see the kiln there in operation. 
When the clay is inside the kiln, the organic elements uh, turn to gas. The gas expands, bloating the clay pellets, creating lots of voids inside. And then the rotation of the kiln aids the formation of the spherical shape. Um, and then basically it goes to the hottest end of the kiln where it centers into a ceramic pellet and it comes out the other end in a graded form. So as you can see there, that's a magnified image of Lika um, and its internal pores. Um, and then obviously on the outside, you've got a very strong ceramic shell, which gives uh, an extremely strong um, and versatile uh, material, which is used in, in various environments now, be it uh, underfloor insulation, structural, geotechnical build, roads, bridges, etc. So it's, it's very much got its home in lots of locations. So what you're seeing up on the screen now is basically what are the parameters behind Lika. Uh, so effectively what, what you've got there is uh, a multitude of, of different parameters. Um, those parameters are effectively what you would use if designing with Lika. Uh, so immediately you can see that we've got a void capacity of 42%. This gives this material extremely good drainage properties, be it in a green roof or be it in a construction in an embankment, uh, be it road or rail, um, obviously giving you some capacity for either water retention and uh, ensuring that water wicks away as well. So you don't then get a, a massive water within the, the construction design. The material has a maximum level of effective stress, which is about 100 kilonewtons per meter square. Um, that doesn't mean the material is weak. Actually, it means the material is strong. In mass fill, the material always needs to be capped. Um, and usually, if that load of 100 kilonewtons per meter square is exceeded, you don't get mass damage to the leaker. It's very minor, so it's, it's, it's not a major issue. Effective cohesion is a great advantage from a contractor's point of view. What that gives you is the ability to install this material when it's wet, which let's face it, in the UK, it generally is, especially after the weather we've had in the last 48 hours. Um, certainly, you could still be installing leak where traditional aggregate would be saturated and would resist compaction. The material has a good angle of shearing resistance, which offers many benefits from storage to uh, the, the offload of pressure on retaining walls and bridge abutment. So we'll talk about that a little bit further in. Uh, we have the delivered weight and compacted unit weight there. The delivered weight is effectively where Lika will absorb anywhere up to 30% moisture within its pellets. So from manufacture where it might be uh, say an average of 280 kilograms per meter cube, when it's delivered it will have moisture. Again, when you consider the UK and how wet we are here, um, the material will absorb that moisture which affects its density by the weight of water. So we have a varying range there of 350 kilograms per meter cube to 455 kilograms per meter cube as a variance in the delivered weight. And the important factor is the compacted unit weight. Uh, 510 um, is the upper limit we would suggest. So if you are designing with Leaker and you are using 510 kilograms per meter cube as your installed compacted density, generally you're sitting with a good factor of safety there. And um, so they are what I call the magic numbers for Leaker. Generally, if you're designing with Leaker, they will be fundamentally the numbers you would use to, uh, to, to work with us. So the pictures that you've got in front of you identify the areas, particularly in the UK, where, where Leaker is used. Um, it's used heavily within rail, it has been used under track within embankments, and it's been used to extend embankments on, on rail projects. Although it's not accepted by Network Rail within their specification book, uh, we know that whenever Leaker is specified, it rarely is turned down on a technical point. Uh, again, if you look at highways, uh, it's fundamentally been used on highway projects right back since the 1980s. Um, you will find it under most of the major motorways in the United Kingdom and even in Ireland as well. Uh, so from a Highways England perspective, again, Leaker is not in the specification for highways, although I'm led to believe this is about to change. Um, but again, uh, through departure, generally you will find that Highways England do accept Leaker as a, a positive solution for uh, reducing settlement and pressure up base where you've got soft ground on a highway design. Coastal projects, you know, it's a lightweight material. Does it work in a coastal project? It works extremely well. In fact, the project there, it's showing you just a little bit of the Blackpool Tower. Uh, where they used it there, it allowed them to uh, retain the existing seawall and build on top of it by reducing pressure behind the existing seawall. Um, and that, that actually saved them about £250,000 on that project by not having to do temporary uh, works. 
Landscape, it has its home in many aspects of landscape. It may be under golf courses, it may be under fireside football pitches, may be under artificial pitches, can be in green roof. It's an excellent drainage material or in green roof, um, or in mass landscaping environments where you, you've got underground car parks with landscape above by using a material like Leica. It's lightweight in nature, um, and its drainage capacity right, performs extremely well in a landscape uh, scenario. As you can see there, the picture for drainage, that's uh, an artificial pitch that's actually on top of a multi-storey car park uh, in Birmingham, um, where effectively they use the leaker again to reduce structural load on the existing car park and allow them to build the five side pitches there. And bridges, uh, the, the, there's more bridges than I can count where leak has been used. It's been used on some major projects and some minor projects. It is used on integral bridges, uh, which again, if you look at the UK market, integral bridges becoming more focused due to low maintenance. Leak performs very well in an integral bridge design. So the kind of places where you'd be using Leica, uh, you know, if, if you consider the, the fundamentals of Leica, it reduces pressure behind uh, bridge abutments. So in the picture there, top top middle, you, you, you've got Leica where it's been used as a backfill on the, the runoff zone um, or run on zone onto a bridge. So you've got a fixed structure there, which is the bridge. Um, and a potentially movable structure, which is where the leak fill is. By putting the leaker in there, you reduce the level of settlement. Um, and that settlement, obviously, if that doesn't take place, reduces the amount of uh, refurbishment they have to do on the bridge going forward to stop the run on, run off, the dump, as I call it, uh, where, where you get the thud from your tire hitting the fixed, which is the bridge falling onto the settlement, which is the, uh, the run on, run off zone. It's used often behind retaining walls, and that, that might be a case of new retaining walls or old retaining walls. And then behind old retaining walls, it performs extremely well uh, by taking a wedge of material away from the, the rear of failing retaining walls and replacing it with a material like leaker. You potentially reduce the pressure on that back wall by anywhere up to 75%. And that is a function of the lightweight nature of leaker um, combined with its good angle of friction at 37 degrees. Uh, but you're also reducing the uh, potential then of slip as well within the ground because obviously you're reducing earth pressure. Um, so it's, it's multifunctional behind retaining walls. And if our blowing facility is used uh, where the retaining walls are in tight access locations, leaker can actually be delivered in a blown uh, format. So it offers a multitude of solutions within the uh, engineered environment. So for storing leaker, it's important to, to just explain to you that we, we store leaker at four strategic locations within the UK. We store the material at open port locations, which from a contractor's point of view, hopefully settles the mind that you can store this material on site without issue of having to protect it. You don't have to cover it. Um, it's open to the elements all the time. It doesn't blow away in the wind, uh, which I have been asked before, crazily as that sounds. Um, and it, it is very easy to manage. Uh, the fact that, again, it resides at a 37 degree stockpile angle. Um, you can stop volumes of this material at the project in advance of the project starting and pile it high effectively. Um, and again, the, the, uh, the, the, the fact that it's not affected by snow, it's not affected by frost, it's not affected by the wind, it's not affected by the rain, uh, gives you a big advantage on a project. <clears throat> so preparation before placing leaker LWA. Uh, generally, we, we always suggest that if the underlying soils are soft, friable, be them peat, alluvials, etc., uh, that you should place a geotech stat, something like a Terran 1000, in the, the, uh, the, the, the cutting or in the, the work area before placing the leaker. The purpose behind that really is just to stop um, migration of those fines or that friable material into the leaker and therefore increasing its density, which defeats the object of having a lightweight material in there. You could use a permeable blanket, which then still allows for, for water to rise. So you, you benefit from using the leaker as an attenuation system if there is a rising water scenario. And then once installed, we would then suggest that, again, a Taran 1000 is placed on top of the leaker before any capping or, or other layers are laid upon the top of it. Again, 40% void capacity with leaker. Generally, what you don't want is that capping layer migrating into the leaker. A, you're wasting material, and B, you're increasing the density of uh, the leaker fill. Compaction is a very important factor, especially from a contractor's point of view. And if you're looking at trying to take advantages at tender um, and installing a material where you can install it very fast and be on and off that section of work very quickly, Leaker offers you that. Generally, you will see a speed either six to ten times faster when you install Leaker compared to traditional material. 
Compaction is the key there. So you'll install leak wrap, maybe a 600 mil lift behind a retaining wall. Obviously, that's three times faster than using traditional material at 225 mil lifts. Now, for each 600 mil lift of leaker, you will compact it using a wacker plate. Generally, we advise a large plate, petrol vibrating wacker plate to install it. Four passes over 600 mil, you will see the material reducing its volume by 8 to 12%. Generally, we say 10% as the, uh, the average. And that's it. You're ready to place your next layer or place your, uh, your structure above the leaker, depending on where you are in the project. Now, in a, in a larger project where you can use the track plan, we would recommend that you install a one meter lift. Um, the principle behind a one meter lift is that you would compact it using track plan. The wider track, the better. Um, nice tight compaction regime, um, four passes. Again, the material reduces in its volume by between eight and 12%, the average being 10%. Um, and that's it, your material's placed and you're ready to go to your next lift or, or start your, uh, your, your build above the leaker, as long as you put the separation layer in first. So it does offer a, you a huge amount of savings when you're on project. So after leak is installed, we always generally suggest that uh, a capping layer is placed on top of leaker. Now, the, the, the scenario there is if, for example, we had weather like we have had this weekend, leaker does suffer some buoyancy. So if you're on a project where rising water could be an issue, if you place your capping layer on top of the leaker, uh, that takes that issue away. But also, once your capping layer is on top of the leaker, you can then use any vehicle you wish to traffic over the top of that fill, as long as the depth of cap is sufficient. Whereas un uncapped leaker should always be travelled on using tracked plan. So again, it's, it's, it's quite important that after a leak is installed that you take care and cover and protect where possible. <clears throat> again, another fundamental benefit of using leaker is the delivery method. Um, as a rule, we'll always try to deliver on walking floor trailers, uh, which if you're looking at the pictures, it's the top uh, right hand picture there, um, uh, left hand picture, sorry, where there's large amounts of material falling out of a big box. Um, that is a walking floor. The material shuffles out of the back of that walking floor. So it takes away your contractual issues of worrying about tippers on site that might overturn. But where it does give you a big advantage is that truck will carry between, on average, 70 meters cube. And I've even had projects where we've delivered 100 meters cube on those trucks. So if you think about a traditional aggregate, you've got 10 cube on a truck. Leaker, you've got 70 cube on a truck. You're reducing seven truck movements to your project, which offers you a huge amount of benefits from a project management point of view. But if you're working in environments where traffic management is an issue, leaker deliveries of this kind really do offer you a big benefit. Um, otherwise, we can deliver using new traditional methods. We can deliver using uh, Arctic tippers. Arctic tippers will generally carry 55 to 60 cube of leaker. Um, and we use high sided eight wheel tippers, which again will generally carry between 28 and 30 cubes. So, on every form of transport, there is a huge advantage of using this material, um, saving the number of movements to site and speed of delivery to site. Now, one of the big advantages of Leaker um, is the fact that you can pneumatically deliver it. So the picture in the bottom of the, uh, the screen there shows a guy on a, a swimming pool project where they're blowing Leaker into the void between the swimming pool and the, the concrete uh, abutment there. Uh, the beauty of that is our blowing rig comes along. It, it has the material um, in, its, in its container um, and we can deliver that material usually about two cube a minute or pretty much 55 cube over two hours. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll just quickly show you a video of, of, of how leakers blown in. Um, it's usually pictures and videos speak a heck of a lot more than, uh, than ever I can. And it gives you a break from listening to me for a second. So this is actually a, a courtyard installation, which the unusual part of this project was uh, they needed all this infill to go in. And the only way they were going to do it using traditional aggregate was building a crane to lift it in over the top, which from the contractor's point of view wasn't possible. There was no space to build the crane. Costs were incredible. So they approached us and we went in there with our blowing rig. We spent a day installing leaker. There was about 30 meters of hoses. You can see just how flexible those hoses are. It had one man on the hose all day. You can see the speed leak is blowing out as well. So that, that gave the project there a huge advantage due to the fact of poor access and the, the, the means to, to blow in at such a fast rate. Um, you can then see that they, they were placing directly on top of the leaker um, and they, they were casting a permeable tarmac, um, resin areas, flower beds, etc. So 
uh, you know, the leaker was was placed very quickly and allowed them to continue with the remainder of their works. And unwittingly, they actually then gave themselves a uh, attenuation layer underneath. Um, so for the couple of hundred mil of leaker that they put in there, they've immediately got a soak away zone, which they wouldn't have had if they'd used traditional type one material. So it, it gave them a multitude of advantages, but the main key was by blowing it in, they did that very quickly within one day, which would have taken them best part of a week to do it using a crane. And there was no mechanical crane needed to be built. And there was no risk either of carrying bolt bags over that roof, as you can see. You know, one of those bolt bags break free and uh, huge amounts of damage would have incurred. And again, the contractor was very worried about that. So it offers massive amounts of advantages. So just to give you some quick case study summaries um, of where we've used this, uh, Liverpool won. Uh, the, the, the problem there was effectively the green area that you can see in the top picture there effectively sits over the car park. Um, so you can imagine that the, the, the excessive load of soil, traditional aggregates, etc., would have been a big problem and would have required a huge amount of steel and concrete and reinforcement to carry it. The solution there was to use the leaker. Uh, obviously, by using leaker, they re reduced the pressure at base quite substantially. Um, but what it also did is it offered them a capability to manage drainage. Uh, with that being a site on incline, um, obviously when it rains, you would have a huge amount of water heading towards the surface water drains. What they realized that by using the leaker is it reduced the speed at which that water attacked the surface water drain and almost hydrobrate the, the flow of water. So it gave them an attenuation within the ground. It gave them a means to hydrobrate the flow of water and it massively reduced pressure on structure. Um, so that, that, that was a very positive uh, project, 9,000 meter cube. So if you're ever in Liverpool, uh, pop by to uh, the, the Liverpool One project and have a work on the landscape there and you, you're walking on a large amount of leaker. Uh, a nice recent project, the US Embassy in London uh, will ignore Donald Trump's uh, remarks on what he thought of it. Um, from our point of view, this was a really interesting project. Uh, we actually dealt with uh, the consultant in New York on this one. Um, so they dealt with it remotely. Um, and effectively, the leak was used for a multitude of reasons on here, predominantly in, in the podium deck areas where they've got a huge amount of rooms underneath there, as you would expect of a building of this type, where they needed to reduce structural pressure in the landscaping areas. Uh, but also they wanted to use the insulation properties of leak uh, to, to reduce issues of, uh, of frost within the delicate piping systems. Um, so they, they, on top of leak, uh, cast the pavements. They were casting soil zones, landscaped areas, etc. Uh, again, very interesting project, very unique because it was a, a more of a structural application rather than a civil engineering highways project. Um, and this has been repeated on numerous occasions now. We're seeing leak have been used in, in green roof in particular because it has no combustibility. So where green roofs have been designed now at height where they're abutting other buildings by using leaker as the primary drainage layer and as part of the uh, element in the organic soil above, um, the level of combustibility is reduced because leaker will not burn, um, but the level of insulation is increased as well because leaker is a natural insulator. Okay, another case study there is the uh, Finningley and Rossington uh, regeneration route. Anybody that knows Doncaster, this feeds off the M18. I think it's at Junction 3. Uh, this bridge was built over an area of ground that was once a riverbed. So as you would know, you would expect uh, a level of alluvials to be existing there. With this crossing the East Coast Mainline Bridge, um, they couldn't afford any settlement of the abutments and certainly they couldn't afford any loadings that might impair the line and um, cause an overturn force. So the solution there was in line with a tensile block wall system um, to use the leaker as the primary infill material on the abutments. It was placed between layers of a uniaxial grid. That uniaxial grid was used to tie back the block wall. And then obviously the leak was used to impose dead load on that grid as well as fill up the, uh, the mass void behind the abutment. Um, there was about 26, in fact, I think in the final, there was about 27,000 cubic leaker actually used on that project uh, very effectively. It was originally designed uh, with EPS, but the contractor at the time, which was Carillion, um, and the designer, Mark uh, McDonald, there was a, an indication that leaker would offer an advantage on that. <clears throat> So effectively, that, that's hopefully giving you a good overview of Leaker, uh, well within the time slot. So I'm pleased about that, as it's my first run on webinar. 
Um, I would ask that you could uh, give us some questions there if it's all possible. Um, obviously, it's always good to, uh, to have this fix. It gives me a bit more to do. Um, and also, if, uh, as I said, if you would give us your feedback on the quality of this webinar, both the technical quality of it and my presentation, if you think I'm, uh, I'm not too good, then please say, because I can then change. We're always good if we can change. Uh, but otherwise, I, I will go to the questions section now and see if anybody's posted some questions. Uh, there's a few there, so that's quite good. Just waiting for that to load. Still waiting. There we go. Okay. Uh, hi, Tom. Um, you, you, you've, you've asked a good question there. What's the effect of the Danish factory location on the carbon footprint uh, of each meter cube of leaker compared to traditional fill? Uh, it's, a, it's an extremely good question, that, Tom. Um, obviously, distance is an issue. Uh, I mean, when we bring leaker over on the ships, we bring it over in mass. So, uh, you know, each ship will be 5,000, maybe 6,000 cube at a time. Um, so we, we get masses of material per ship, which when you consider the supply into the UK and we supply at four different ports, we keep that stockpile topped up on a regular basis. So um, we, we manage our ships effectively. Shipping actually is, if you look at it, uh, quite an environmentally friendly solution. Um, we don't use huge ships. We use something called the Lady Vessels, which are, are quite small marine vessels. So it's not like they're, they're pumping huge amounts of pollution out into the atmosphere. Uh, but yes, there, there, there is a carbon footprint there. I can't deny that. Um, and, and where we, we work is that it's the offset of our carbon footprint. So once Leica reaches the port, you know, if we can put Leica on a walking floor truck at 70 cube, that's one truck as opposed to seven trucks, which you would use to, to move traditional fill. So straight away, we're offsetting our carbon footprint there. Um, also, the fact that when we take Leica to the site, they're installing it six to ten times faster with a lot less energy and mechanical interaction. So again, there's a, an offset into the atmospheric output and the amount of mechanical energy used to install the Leica. So that, they're, they're huge benefits. You've also got to consider that Leica is a natural inert material. And, and myself, I have experienced projects where they've gone into an embankment that's been expanded. Um, and they've taken the leaker out, they've tested it to, to, to show uh, compatibility with our declaration. And then they've reused it, uh, which with traditional aggregate, that's very hard to do. Um, leaker could also quite easily be taken to landfill. It doesn't carry landfill tax like other materials because it's not a contaminated material. It is clean, it is inert. Um, and I've even had people who've suggested that they might take it out after temporary road access and plow it back into the road because it does get used in horticulture and hydroculture quite readily. So there's all those factors. And then it takes you right back to manufacturer leak. One cube of clay gives us five cube of material. There's very few um, products like ours that actually take such a small amount of material and give a high return in volume of material. So ho hopefully, uh, Tom, if, if that answers your question, that would be just, just, just give me a, a quick thumbs up, if you would, please, a, a yes. But if, if it doesn't, then again, please, please ask the question uh, that you need qualifying a little bit further. Whilst uh, I'm waiting for Tom to, to respond on there, um, we've had a response from Ethan. Um, he's asking whether the material is readily available in the UK. Uh, we do. We stockpile it in four different port locations. Um, port locations are Kings Lynn on the East Coast. We stock it in South Wales at Newport, in Liverpool and in Immingham. So we're, we're, we're very strategically placed there. Um, and then if the project is actually outside of those stockpiles, um, you, you will find then what we do is we will, and again, this in a, in a sense goes back to Tom's question, we, we will take the material direct to the project. Personally, um, I, was, I was pivotal in delivering the Perth project in Scotland uh, a couple of years ago where they used about 20,000 cube of leaker. Lightweight aggregate was a primary solution in that project, uh, but to ship aggregate by road was going to be a big problem. Even locally for that project, it was hard work getting aggregate in. Um, what I did is I immediately identified that we could take it to the local Perth port. Uh, we worked hard to get it in there. That gave the material a seven mile drive to the project. So it reduced the environmental impact of that project quite massively. So in a way, by taking it on ship from our stockpiles in Denmark or Portugal, um, it actually, in that case, gave the project uh, a big environmental uh, reduction, to which actually Balfour Beatty um, actually did a big uh, YouTube shout out to, to say that that, uh, you know, that was a benefit to them. So hopefully that answers Ethan's uh, question. Thank you for responding, Tom. Um, I mean, by all means, if you want more qualification on that, uh, you can drop me an email after the event if you wish. 
Is there any more questions from anybody else? Okay, no, Ethan's happy with my answer there. Yeah, yeah, that's a result. Um, so, okay, fantastic. It doesn't look like there's any more questions. So th those of you that are hopefully still with us, uh, what I would ask is that if this has given you uh, a bit of a more interest for, for Lika, we do offer CPDs at offices, so we would normally come in over lunch. The presentation's a little bit more in-depth. Um, it generally takes over an hour, so uh, it gives more opportunity to, 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 to allow questions, but gives you a lot more information on the product. So by all means, if you go on to our website, you can click on there and request a CPD. Um, I would, with pleasure, attend your offices and run that CPD. But if you've got any projects that you're looking at that either you have looked at and you wonder whether or not leak will be a solution, but more importantly, projects that are oncoming, either in design or even on the site now, please drop me an email, you know, it, whatever the question, it's always worth answering and I would be really intrigued to know if there's any projects out there that we can maybe assist you with. Okay, so that, that's that's pretty much where we're, we're, we're up to now. If there's no more questions, then um, I would say thank you very much for attending this webinar today. I hope it's been of use to you. And, okay. And, and please do come back to us and, and uh, you know, let, let us know about your uh, feelings of this webinar and uh, the, give us your poll responses as well. That would be much appreciated. Otherwise, thank you very much for your time today and hopefully I'll speak to you again. Thank you.